Lieutenant General Dr. R. K. Anand is an eminent luminary and distinguished authority with a wealth of experience spanning over four decades in infrastructure development, human resource management, communication systems, data networks, and cybersecurity. Currently serving as the Director General of Manav Rachana International Institute of Research and Studies, he holds a PhD, multiple MPhil degrees, and an MBA. Dr. Anand has made remarkable strides in the realms of operational research and logistics management. May I request you, sir, to please share your thoughts with the House. Now, as the subject I have been given was to talk of how NEP is going to fill up this, that's why I gave some figures. Now, across the globe, what's going to happen? Across the globe, there is a need now to have the human race adapt or acquire this technology change or transformation taking place as fast as possible. You know, that is where the dividend of age or the young age which India has comes in. And that is where India has an advantage to train this workforce which we have to play a major role in this technology transformation or the life transformation which is going to take place across the globe. Now that is where the NEP 2020 is the one which is going to bring in a dramatic shift in the way the young generation is being trained and taught across a country. And as we see as a uh, has been brought out, NEP 2020 actually has brokered down a age-old, very structured teaching oblique uh, training pedagogy which was going on. And it has now tried to reframe it in the most, I would say, adaptable way which suits the requirement of next two to three decades. And the requirement of next two to three decades is not the structured degrees like we did BCom, BA, BSc, BTech, MTech, MCA, BCA, BBA. But it's more to do with what's the demand which is coming from the industry, what's the demand which is coming from the environment, how can a young child pick up things of his interest, things which the industry want, frame around it, learn and go. It also enables the younger generation to adapt certain skill sets which are very, very important, which some of us in our generation picked up at much later in our age. So it enables a young man to actually pick up them at much younger age. It also enables individuals to pick up vocational skill sets which some of our ancestors picked up while they were living around in villages, they had to interact with the environment. So they picked up these vocational skills, which went missing suddenly because we transformed to urban life, and suddenly these skill sets were gone. It also enables an individual to actually not disengage from his mother language or mother tongue, pick up another mother tongue or another language and try and learn. It actually says that as you grow with your mother, you have a mother tongue. That's the best way to train or teach a child. So it enables, the policy enables that let the child be taught in the language he understands the best. That's his mother language or that's his mother tongue. And from there on, bring him to a stage where he finds that he's gained enough to disengage with mother tongue and then adapt to a few more languages so that he's become globally available. So NEP 2020 in brief is actually now providing us a structure to pick up a child who's native of India, enable him in his own mother language, bring him to a global stage and thereafter train him into the technology which is evolutionary, which takes him to what the global village wants. So if you, if you ask me to sum up, I would say that NEP 2020 definitely act in very many ways uh, in connecting the rural India with the global world. 
gap was that rural India was getting left behind the technology evolution and the education which was taking place. So it enables the education to have inroads into rural India, bring that into the mainframe, take larger percentage of Indian population onto global arena. I will just finish by saying that there are certain more figures which we keep talking of and, and there, is, there is a figure known as, uh, you know, gross enrollment ratio, GER, most of you must be reading it. This figure runs very low in India as far as schools is concerned, runs further low as far as higher education is concerned. You find just about, in some states it's about 60 to 70 percent, in some states it's less than 50 percent of the children actually finish schooling. And just about 30% of these who finish schooling actually go into higher education and finish it. The NEP 2020 attempts to bring this school education to almost 100% of GER and cross 50% as far as higher education is concerned. Now that can only happen when we have inroads into rural India enable education in the language which is spoken best in the rural areas. That's how I brought out that point of mother tongue. Now, there are a lot of schools which used to say earlier that learn international language, you will grow global. But there are various models available across the globe where you find that bulk of the education in those countries is going on in mother tongue. Only at much later stage, they try and become global. Next door neighbor, China is a big example. France is another example. So you have the successful models which are available. So I finish by saying that, well, NEP enables us to transform bulk of India onto this education eco space. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much.